Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii Studios for another exciting episode of Security Matters Hawaii. We have Dieter Giblin in here today. He is the Federal Programs Manager for Integrated Security Technologies. Dieter, thanks for coming in. I know it's a thanks. busy time of year for you, man. So it's I promise deep. only 30 minutes and we'll cut you loose. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we, we wanted to get into this episode a little bit into what's happened in the federal government space. And Dieter's been working that space for many, many years. And then for our industry, I think a half a decade or so. Yeah. So um, we, today we thought we'd, we'd talk a little bit about some of those um, sort of the intricacies that I, I think are going to flow out into the other commercial sectors. But for now, you know, I think the DOD is sort of leading the way. Yes. And, and we've got some great examples of some of that. Um, before we get started into that, why don't you give us some, um, give our readers, our listeners, viewer, readers, viewers, uh, a little bit of your history, um, you know, as much as you care to share, you know, don't give your name yeah. and your address and all that stuff out, or so at least your people address. out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll go talk to them. Um, Peter Giblin, I've uh, been in sales for, I don't know, I don't know how many years, but it's been a <laughs> long time, over 25 years. Um, been in the Fed space for probably 12 years now, on and off. Um, Ex-Navy, so... Did a lot of work uh, with government contracting, came aboard almost five years ago with IST and has kind of ran it since then. And I did the cardinal sin and kept my wow, phone nice. on here. There we go. That's wow. a first. That's a first. <laughs> so, uh, so basically just uh, been in Fed for a while. Um, really enjoy the Fed space. Really enjoy uh, working uh, in security. It's kind of been five years, but I was able to translate a lot of my technical background into it. So, and uh we're rocking and rolling and having a good time. Yeah, that's what's happening. Do you um have you seen uh, any more tension in that space that compared to when you first started? Since there's been a lot of more regulations and rules coming out around you know what they can do and can't do. You know what's been your experience with the markets out here? And primarily, I know you've worked in the Hawaii market or the Pacific market. But. Well, it's been a lot more um, looking at Chinese technology. Um, okay, definitely um, trying to get away from any of that stuff that's manufactured that's not an OEM manufactured within the within either the U.S. or within our trade partners. I mean, okay. like Taiwan or even Mexico, Canada. Those are kind of the bigger manufacturing sectors in even Europe. That's kind of been really what the Fed has clamped down, is making sure that, hey, we want to have these products to know that they're not any spyware or anything that's built into them. There's mm -hmm. been, you know, the case of uh, the Chinese official that was giving out the jump drives. And oh. he actually had spyware on it, or wow. even some of the stuff that they've had with uh, with some of the non-U.S. made routers that actually had a small chip that was embedded in it that was hard to find that was actually sending out information. Ouch! And okay. you know, and then there was the the big camera incident. Everybody knows about the about the Hikvision Huawei chipsets that were actually hacked and were able to to um, control those cameras, and the Chinese were actually using, allegedly, I can't say for sure, but that's kind yeah, of Yeah, we're not allegedly. doing attribution today. No, we're not doing, <laughs> but that's allegedly what's come down. In fact, even the president signed an executive order back in May banning certain OEM chips that were made mm -hmm. in China to kind of help protect it. That's kind of where I've seen the industry going on that side. Um, I've seen the federal side more and more with trying to do what we call FIPS compliancy, HSPD, which is Homeland Security Directorate for um, unifying credentialing so everybody has a single credential trying harder and harder obviously with uh with piv with cac with with moving that direction Piv and cat we better give that okay better give sorry the... so piv is it's basically a, i don't have one on me um, personal identity verification yeah, but it's um the card that you see most military people with or you even see the coast guard with it has a small chip set on the bottom of that that contains all pertinent information and actually goes to the big federal server that says hey is this person real is this person fake um, a lot more credentialing going that way to um, help secure our bases, secure our, our mm. warfighter today. So those have been the big changes I've seen in the last four years. Wow. So. Yeah, and I think it's it's interesting. I know that for like just even like base, base access, like you yeah. said, you know, they they started to issue those PIV PIV interoperable yeah. PIV uh, PIV I PIV C PIV compliant yeah. type of mm -hmm. credentials on yeah. there, and they those had chips. And I mean, for many years, you know, you would just have to go to the uh, sort of the sign-in desk, yep, yep. and they'd maybe look at your ID, yep. sign in some paper, but yeah. now they've, you've given biometrics mm -hmm. and everything in order to get just a base access pass that they're comparing, yep. I guess, making sure it's still valid when you enter the base? Yeah. Is that sort well, of the same, same idea? Well, that's what the DBIDS program is now that okay. the Navy kind of followed. It's a defense biometric identification. I forgot what the other D is for, um, but it's designed that, you know, you're, you're using biometrics, you're using um, a unified system okay. that if I check in, before, if I checked in in one base, I'd have to 
you know, I, I wouldn't maybe be on another base. So yeah. I, I get to go to PMRF, um, love Kauai, get to go out there. So it's pretty nice that I'm in their system as well. They use the same photo that they have here at the base and ID okay. office. So it's, it's, it's unifying that credentialing. Um, one of the big pushes now has kind of been, and I'm not sure how far it's going to go, is that we actually have interoperability with our allies. Awesome. So we have credentialing where, um, so if I'm, let's say I'm in Singapore, and I want to work with the Singapore military, I should be able to operate within that. So it's coming. It's, awesome. but, you know, with the government, uh, I was interesting. I was in a, in a conference uh, about a month ago, actually, with your wife, um, and there was a lot of contracting officers, and, and the big issue is, is that technology that's here today sometimes sits on the pier for five or six years before it gets implemented. I see. So, and those are the big changes we're also trying to make is to catch up with that. So we sort of had these standards and some of the some of the guidance has been available. The technology has surely been available. Yeah, yes. Of course, it's expensive and yes. it's to be budgeted for. And yes. that takes multiple years, as I'm yes. sure you've experienced trying to get things done. Um, so I, I didn't I wasn't aware that we're looking to interoperate um, with other countries. So would that be like an, an American military facility on in Singapore, for example, or, or perhaps even we'd have interoperability where we're sharing our credential sets, not the credentials, but the what do they call that? The federal bridge. Uh, so that you know it's valid or invalid, So that's right? one of the things the that, yeah, so that's the one of the things that I understand they've been trying to do. That's awesome. Um, and, you know, but you also have, so there are some challenges, and some of the challenges are is that, you know, if I'm Army, I'm using a certain access control system. Okay. If I'm Navy, I'm using it, and even within different Navy bases are using different ones. But it's being able to standardize that if I, I mean, I'll just throw some brand names out there. Um, if I have Linnell, which is the big access control system that's with Navy region here. Okay. And I want to go and use Secure, which is what a lot of the shipyards are running. Okay. Will I be able to have that interoperability? Will so so using to, a single credential yeah, could I have and, it with either these, system. And that's gotcha. kind of where we're at today is just seeing we can do that and then translating that into, so if I have, let's say I have my allies coming out for RIMPAC, I have, sure. You know, we have, you know, you have Taiwan, you have Australia, Japan, South Australia, Korea. New Zealand. I mean, you have ANZAC, you have all, all these different military forces. Being able to, instead of crunching all of my, my people at my badge and ID office, like, hey, we got to enroll 2,000 people oh. so they have access, is actually being able to have that credentialing ready to roll right then and there. So Interesting. it's the future. Hopefully it comes, um, you know. But the other big thing that's also coming down, too, is the whole... Uh, Cloud, federal cloud solution, which is to try to, that's, I'm sure you've heard about that, all of that going down is putting more and more into the cloud, which might be able to help us with interoperability. So we'll see. Huh. I, I, um, I know like Jedi's, are you talking yeah. about some of these, so Jedi, these yeah. big contracts that yeah. the government's working on? I think, yeah. aren't Amazon and Google and Microsoft in a big it's battle a, it's to a see? It's a fight. I was actually at How dinner. much money will it, will it be? Do you know off oh, the top of your billions. head? Is it like it's, $50 billion? It's billion. Or, so, okay. uh, um, yeah, I was actually at a dinner um, Sunday night with, uh, with a couple of people, including one that's a CIO in the Navy. And that was one of the discussions is, you know, Jedi and the impact of Jedi and also the impact of just all the protesting that's going on behind it. It's like, hey, did our, did our contractors actually do a good job with trying to vet this? And I'd have uh -oh. to assume that they did. I mean, it's a billion dollar it's contract. The, it's their business. So, I mean, so, we, we do hope they know what they're yeah. doing. So, I mean, it's just, that's the next level on where we're going. So. Like I said, four years, it's just been a lot of changes going wow. through. You know, I think, uh, you know, looking at ways to replace the NMCI for security, just all these different components, you know, command and control structuring. Those are, I mean, not quite our purvey, but, mm -hmm. you know, and probably one of the other things that you're familiar with is like a lot of the cyber assurance that's going on with companies with contracting, especially sure. since, who was it that got, um, the big contractor that got hacked um, last year and... Yeah, some in California, and yeah. I know it was a, a, and not just hack, yeah. but a big fine. They had big, a breach, yeah. and they got fined yep. for it under the Fair Trade yeah. Act. So Dave and I, we had an episode about that a few weeks ago. Okay. So those are yeah. things that you, you just see as it's, you know, as it runs tighter and tighter. And, you know, and obviously the battlefield, I mean, we still have the battlefield, which is, you know, our ships, our tanks, our, our warfighter. But there's that back-end battlefield going in the cyber warfare spaces, mm -hmm. which is really, you know, that's kind of the the front that we're fighting today to keep our technology whole and and you know and not have to worry about I just invented something and you know six months later another country has the same exact thing and we know that they didn't develop it in that time. Mm, so yeah, yeah. And there's definitely I think been some examples. I think they talk about the F-35 fighter yep. uh, mimicked quite closely in in China. So maybe yeah. some of the um, um, 
uh, I guess, technology yeah. around that development was exfiltrated because I guess it showed up so quickly. Oh, yeah, no. And, and if you can, obviously, I think it seems reasonable to anyone, if you can steal information that's yeah. high-end, oh, yeah. leading-end edge engineering, yeah. you don't have to do that engineering time yourself, so your time to build something of mm -hmm. equal uh, lethality, I guess would yeah. be a warfare yeah. word, you know, yeah. it, is shortened quite a bit. Yeah. So, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, yeah, so I primarily deal on the ESS side, but there's so much more that's being involved in it today, and we just, mm -hmm. you know, it's making sure that we have the right people, that we're vetting um, you know, that we're keeping our documents under control to help support everything else. So yeah. I kind of went off a little tangent that's there, okay. but that's kind of... Yeah. Let's talk about that, though. Do you get that, um, you know, like when you get in front of your clients and their, and their contracting officers, um, is this a part of that discussion today, or is there concern about the, you know, you and I have talked about, like, yeah. the engineering drawings yeah, yeah. that we have for, for their facilities. You know, yeah. how are we going to take care of that? And what if there's a, you know, our, our installers have a piece of paper out there looking yeah. at it on the site, and the wind blows, and it blows yep. away. What are we... We're gonna chase it down on the beach. We're yep. gonna call the call the forces. What yeah. are we gonna do? You know? Yeah. No. That's we have those conversations. It's it's more and more mm. um, we're we're identifying those issues and being able to hold on to it. And you know, and different levels of security. Obviously, you know, um, is it for official use only? Is it just you know mm -hmm. um, partial dissemination? I mean, how far? I mean, up until we got confidential secret PS, and so it it it's something that we. We've been very, I think we've been pretty proactive. I think we're ahead of yeah. a lot of the other companies on that. And, and those are conversations we have. Yeah. And it's, you know. Yeah, I don't know if the government's prepared yet to even, you know, the new, this new the CMMC, government. they're going to, there's quite a bit, there's going to be like five tiering levels. And, yeah. you know, we've talked about our, our engineering world security, you yeah. know, e yeah. electronic yeah. security world being CUI. But yeah. it, reasonably for certain facilities, a SCIF, sure. for example, a secure was that secure compartmented um, information, uh, information facility. facility. Yeah. So a skiff, the information about how a skiff is secured may, if it's say a secret yeah. skiff or a TS skiff, yeah. maybe that information gets raised up in its um, classification. Well, more and more, I mean, it's it's you know is operating within compartmentalized drawings that you know soon we will have where where my engineers, it's like, hey, you're gonna have to sign out for these drawings. You're gonna have to keep track of them. Mm -hmm. You cannot. Or even points where it's going to be, hey, you can only leave the drawings on site, and you'll be given to them when you get there, and it'll be sure. controlled somewhere else. So sure, that's where things are going. It's going more and more down that way, especially when we deal with you know access control, um, you know camera locations, everything like that. that mm -hmm. I'm sure other people would love to get their hands on and go, oh hey, now I know how this door is designed or how this access control system is mm -hmm. designed. So yeah, and I do think that uh, you know that this type of work aggregated for our adversaries if they wanted to attack a facility or attack something. I think it's valuable information. I mean, well, it would be to someone like me yeah. who knows how to disable it all. Yeah. So, you know, presumably they got guys as smart as we are out there. You know? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they do. I mean, I mean, it's the, the thing that really, I mean, strikes me is just as, as we move forward is just, you know, I, I, as corny as it sounds, is actually protecting the warfighter and and understanding mm -hmm. that in case something does happen, we have that ability to, to lock the bases down, to be able to, to track um, terrorism. If you take a look at the Navy Yard incident, that sure. was one of the things that, you know, it spawned some stuff that's happening here. Um, awesome. With being able to, to take a look and, and how do I track, um, I have a, somebody that's an active shooter or even, even a terrorist cell or, or even a foreign, a foreign entity that's on, on the base trying to, mm -hmm to penetrate, how do I track that from place to place? And those are things that we're working on right now is being able to, to have that technology and be able to, to protect the warfighter, protect what's happening on our bases and, you know, and be able to respond actively if they're with um, security forces, if there's an incident. Sure. So yeah, you brought up a good point. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of advancements in the technology and we'll get into a little, some of the regs after the break, but it does, you know, come back to that. There's still that person who can be that oh, yeah. insider threat, either for stealing intel, yep. stealing yep. information, yep. or for harming people. And that's yep. a whole other. That's an evolving thing. It's that's a little more thing. difficult to track. Um, we've got to pay some bills, so we'll take a break for a minute, and we'll be right back. Aloha. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough of Sister Power here at Think Tech of IE, and Sister Power is all about motivating empowering, educating, and inspiring all people. And we have various subjects here 
Sister Para is here at Think Tech every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Again, my name is Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, host of Sister Para. We look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at sistersinparankavai at gmail.com. Look forward to chatting with you soon. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Becky Sampson, and I'm the host of It's About Time. On the Think Tech Hawaii, a digital nonprofit organization that's raising public awareness. Join us on Wednesday at 2 p.m. where we talk about real issues. Some of the topics will include entrepreneurship, health, life skills, and growing your business. So once again, this is Becky Sampson on It's About Time on Wednesday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters Hawaii. We're with Dieter Giblin, the Federal Programs Manager at Integrated Security Technologies. And we're just looking through some of the changes that have gone on. Um, we talked a little bit about the NDAA, how yeah. the, um, the acquisition rules have changed regarding Chinese products. And that's one example of, you know, starting to say, hey, we don't trust certain things. Yeah. And so we're not going to allow those things to be bought or deployed any longer. Yeah. And yeah. in fact, if they've been deployed, I think they got to remove them by a certain date. Um, and then they're even looking downstream at some of the OEM products because many of the parts inside yep. of our products in our industry are made from yep. outside of our country yep. and maybe the trust isn't there, you know, for those products. Then, but you brought a really good point though about like the base yard. You talked a little bit about how he's, um, a guy was um, let go, but his base access card still worked and yep. he could get on the base. Yes. So where there was an integration between sort of the HR system and the, mm -hmm. and the physical access control system. And we talked a little bit about some of the changes to that whole uh, identity and authentication management yep. stuff. I wanted to get back just a little bit on the access control stuff. You know, the, um, the bases here have been doing some migration. I know yep. you've been involved in some of that. Are they uh, the newest, um, I think, st standard for encryption on, on the, like between the readers yep. and the um, head end panels and all that is um, the uh, open supervised device protocol. Yep. So are you starting to see them talking about this? Because I know. It's a heavy forklift to have to rewire many of these sure, things. Sure, sure. There's been a lot of talk about OSDP. Um, currently, you know, the migration path is there. I know okay. that they're looking at, the, at doing that and, you know, over time. Um, sure. I mean, it's, you know, obviously it's money. It's it funding, all, right? No it's one has the money funding, to just so. redo everything for them. And, and so we, we've seen it. We've had the conversations regarding good. that. Um, you know, the one good thing is that the product even today, um, with Wigan up, but there's still a lot of encryption that comes in the back end past the board on that side. So it's, 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 there are some, some good things. It's, as we move forward, obviously it's, like I said, it's all about money. It's all about where the priorities lie. I mean, do mm -hmm. we, what, where do, where do we take that funding? Sure. So, I mean, one great thing is that, I mean, we're talking FIPS with clients, we're talking FICAM clients, we're talking all these different okay. regulations that flow down on that. And, and so FIPS is the Federal Information with Processing Standards yes. for Encryption, right? Yes. I think that gives other standards. Yeah, there's four thing. levels of, the, of that. So, okay. I mean, and pretty much level two is just to, to make sure that the security level, um, that there's a, crypto, there's a crypto module that actually will encrypt the data going okay. from all the way through. And, and is it AS-256, I think? Or I believe is it, so, yes. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Let me just make sure. I actually have it written down here because I knew we were going to talk about this. Good. So, yes. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. So Yeah. No, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there. I mean, there's a lot of guidance, but you know, it's like anything. You know, everybody talked about HIPAA for years on the medical side. Sure. You know, when were we going to get there? And that's still an ongoing module. Mm -hmm. I mean, our ongoing process. The I like to say that um, the government moves in two things: slow and glacial. I mean, it's okay. it just it you know, and that is an issue, and it's something that is being talked about more and more. Is that as we and not just in our side. I mean, this is just kind of not just on the, on the security side, but being able to be more agile and mm -hmm. being able to, to do those things. And I think that the government is trying more and more to kind of get away from the bureaucracy, the funding morass and, the, and that contracting morass and, and be a little bit more agile with, with taking that up. And I'm seeing it more and more. Mm. And you know, luckily for us, we, being the type of company we are, we're, we're able to get some funding a little bit better than others. So. Right, to help out. To help out. And help yeah, and I, to, to be fair to the government on our basis here, I mean, ever, our, our, our viewers, I mean, I understand, but there's many layers of security before you oh, get yeah. to that door. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You had to know who you were to get on the base. You had yep. to know who you get to where to get inside yep. the gate of the facility. So there's, 
There's a whole lot of stuff that DOD does before yep. it's really worried about somebody, you know, replaying the the Wagen the Wagen information yep. down down the wire and all that kind yeah. of stuff. There's supervision even on the installments on the on oh, the walls no, and stuff there. like that. I mean, so, you, you can't even touch anything without without, without somebody setting off an alarm. Somebody knows something that's going on. <laughs> yeah, there. and then the guys with the guns come running because yep. you are on a military base. I mean, so that, yes. but outside that, you know, and then the commercial community. I mean, the same problem exists and funding's the same issue. There and, is. You know, no one no one's been prepared to forklift. You know, access control costs are still. With three to five thousand a door, I think yep. that's kind of always been the range. That is the range. And you know, when you all of a sudden have ten thousand doors to replace, yeah, wow. I mean, that's no one's going to just you know write no. a check for that in one one quarter or one no. year. So it takes time. I mean, the good thing is, is that I mean, you have like you said, you have multiple layers. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to get into to, to Pearl Harbor's uh, sure Thank intricacy you. of their defense, Thank you. <laughs> but I will let you know this that you, you're you're gonna. I mean, even if you get on, you're still going to have. Challenges. That's oh, yeah. for darn sure. So, um, a lot of things going on there, and you know, I feel secure. Um, I'm lucky, lucky to be part of that. I yeah. mean, you know, I've been been part of uh, you know prior military like yourself. We're both ex Navy, um, yeah. but it's good to be able to support uh, support the community, support uh, the warfighter, support the effort to to keep our co our country secure. And and you know, I have kind of a tagline that says I I I. Uh, I secure the people that secure us. So secure the kind of, country, sure. So the secure the country. That's fine. So yeah, yeah. it's kind of when people ask me what I do, it's like, yeah, you know, I, I secure the people that secure us, and and it's it's a good thing. And you know, the government's doing doing the right stuff. They're they're looking at uh, different ways. We've had some great conversations with them too regarding um, you know the new AI analytics with cameras being sure. able to to train cameras for you know for different searches for being able to identify people and to be able to track people so it's it's not like uh we're not on the forefront thing i think the government is leading the charge on a lot of stuff i it's do just, too it's just a question of you know getting the funding getting it there and and how soon we can turn it around to get it to get it implemented and out there so and i, I think people may be surprised how much money the government does spend testing Yes. And fleshing out and, yeah. and they have labs all around the country yeah. and in a many different programs yeah. from darpa to nasa to commercial programs yeah. like maybe with folks like raytheon or lockheed martin yeah. that are constantly yep. testing yep. the technology because yep. as you've seen how how many new products do we get a year in our industry way too many way too many. Way and so too many. you know how do you figure out what's what's really sure. good and what really works and and what what fulfills the need yeah. that you really have well one thing i mean is is you know um you know being able to support uh Navwar with former Spaywar, which is now mm -hmm. on Navwar slash um, Naval Information Warfare Center, with them helping them support their lab and standing up a lab to test awesome. environments to help work with uh, with Navy region here and with other regions throughout the Indo Pacific and being able to support that. And you know, it's it's good. I mean, I you know, I cannot say anything bad. Super sharp people. Some of the sharpest people I, I've met are working for them and and making things happen. And and you know doing uh, different scenarios of testing, making sure things are working correctly, and standing it up and, and putting it out there. So. Awesome. So from your perspective, since we've got, you know, the in, we got the NDAA rules changing now, kind yeah. of controlling products, we've got guidance around the 800-171 and yep. all the cybersecurity compliance for yeah, our yeah, company yeah. and for our people. Um, what, uh, what are you hoping to see out of the contracting officers in the future that'll help you get stuff deployed quicker, you know, to, to protect our warfighter a little better? You know, what do you, what do you think's the sort of the roadblock now? Other than I know it's an annual cycle and well, money's not unlimited, so I know those things. But. It's just you know getting through the contracting, getting through you know I mean for me it's things that I mean it tends to operate in, in a nine month cycle. Things that it's like I, I look at stuff. Okay. If I look at stuff today, I'm probably not going to get it till probably um, April May. And when you say get, you mean the contract, the to, contract to start to deploy, start to deploy it. it, and then it gets so it might take another six months yeah, to get it so, deployed. So, so it's just sure. it, it's that, and you know, and I understand. There's, you know, you with all the regulations with the FAR, which is the Federal Acquisition Regulations, yep. which is like reads like a phone book. I mean, it's so <laughs> huge. It's just, um, it's just being able to, to to move that through. And I know there's a lot of talk about removing the roadblocks and, and getting things moving. And you know, it's it's just a question of uh, of can we and how can we and sure. when will we. Yeah, because we're not going to just take the FAR and start striking out clauses. No, no, I mean, so you, you did bring up, have you seen Buy America's in there, that the yep, Buy American yep, Acts yep. represented in the yep. FAR? With the, with the pushback in, the, in the, this NDA in particular against other foreign products, is there more, or has there been more focus in your contracting oh, yeah. experience on, I, on Buy America? Okay. I basically awesome. have to, I mean, 
every time we quote anything out, it has to be, um, you know, what's the country of origin, where okay. is it at, or is it, is it TAA compliant, which is, um, you know, trade compliancy. If it's not American, where is it manufactured at? So there's a buy American, buy American. They're kind of, you just add an N and they're a little bit different. I so see. buy America is, you know, if you can't buy America, go somewhere else. Buy American is, it has to be American manufactured. I see, gotcha. So, um, yeah, and there are companies that make sim the same product, yep. one's, one's compliant, one's not, yep. like uh, IT equipment, for like example. Cisco. Okay, there you go, great, so, great I mean, example. I can just give you an example of a Cisco router that um, I would purchase that, um, if it wasn't TA compliant, it's gonna cost me 6,000, and because it's TA compliant, it cost me 18,000. Wow, So seriously. wow. So it's kind of interesting on, on how that works, and. You know, it's, uh, and I understand, I mean, we, we, our manufacturing is not what it used to be. Um, okay. Hopefully we, we're, we're translating that and bringing it back in. But, you know, we're, it's pretty good that, you know, even everything that I, I put in systems right now, including the wire, is uh, either made in America or it's TAA. Yeah, so, we don't want those little, little chips on the wire. I don't think we can. Can I'm you not imagine about that? that but. <laughs> No, but I mean, you know, oh, you yeah, see these guys hacking little funny. USB drives I mean, it's with It's pretty chips amazing. And, yeah, it's pretty I mean, I'm sure amazing. they could shrink it to be right in the yeah, wire. Yeah, That'd be the, scary. The, the amazing thing that, uh, that happens in today's industry. But, you know, I, it's fun. I'm having fun. I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy the people I work with. They're good people. They're, you know, um, highly educated, tend to really, you know, we all want the same mission, and that's to, mm -hmm. to secure and to, to make sure that we're, we're, helping, we're helping the warfighter, we're helping the, our country, and, I mean, not to sound all patriotic, but it's kind of true. It's kind of fun to, to be able to see that and to make sure that uh, we're, we're keeping our country a little safer and our warfighter safer. Yeah, it's fun to be part of that change, right? Even though yeah. it's difficult, because I know it's, it's probably yeah. the most, I think it's the most highly regulated environment that we work in yeah. as an industry. Um, I talk to other integrators who are not engaged at all with federal business yeah. and DOD, and they, yeah. they have no idea how difficult it can yeah. be. So thanks, thanks for your work in that space. Keep it up. It's good stuff. Thanks. Appreciate thanks. it. All right. And thanks for coming in today. I know you're busy. Um, to my viewers out there, um, if you're going to work with the government um, and you're going to get engaged with DOD business and, and you haven't been, please understand that there are a lot of rules and regulations you're going to need to learn to get engaged. I'm not trying to hold you and say don't get engaged with it. I'm saying learn first so that you do it right because our, our warfighters do deserve the protection that Dita was talking about today. Thanks again so much, and we'll see you next week on Security Matters Hawaii. Aloha.